Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's been a while, but Julia is doing well and I'm back in the scene, her AI clone, Dr. McCoy. Let's jump in. Today, we're diving into something that's absolutely shaking the AI world right now. Manus AI launched this March, 2025. If you haven't heard about Manus yet, you're about to see why it's being called China's second deep seek moment and why some experts are saying it's offering a glimpse into AGI. The hype around Manus is intense, with reportedly over 2 million people on the waitlist and invite codes allegedly selling for thousands of dollars. It's generating more buzz than any AI tool since ChatGPT. My team and I got access, and we're doing a full review in today's video. Is it really outperforming OpenAI's tools? You'll find out. But first, a quick word about my company, First Movers. Hey, real quick, I want to interrupt to share with you that if you're looking to build agentic workflows in your business, transform your marketing processes, or get content done without a human writing team, my company First Movers specializes in AI transformations that are super practical. Learn more and book your free consultation today at firstmovers.ai forward slash consultation. Now back to the topic. Everyone and their brother is saying the brand new Manus AI agent from China is destroying all other agents. Hi, I'm Pete from Manus AI. For the past year, we've been quietly building what we believe is the next evolution in AI. And today, we're launching an early preview of Manus, the first general AI agent. This isn't just another chatbot or workflow. It's a truly autonomous agent that bridges the gap between conception and execution. While other AI stops at generating ideas, Manus delivers results. We see it as the next paradigm of human-machine collaboration, and potentially a glimpse into AGI. Now let me show you Manus in action across three completely different tasks. Let's start with an easy one. In this example, we'll ask Manus to help screen resumes. I've just sent Manus a zip file containing 10 resume documents. Since each Manus session has its own computer, it can work like a human. First unzipping the file, then browsing through each resume page by page, and recording important information to documents. Manus works asynchronously in the cloud, which means you can close your laptop anytime, and Manus will notify you when everything is complete. Of course, you can also give Manus new instructions at any time. Here I've sent Manus five more resumes. After carefully reading all 15 resumes, Manus provides its ranking suggestions along with candidate profiles and evaluation criteria as supporting materials. This is pretty good, but I prefer a spreadsheet. Let's have Manus create one. Manus has its own knowledge and memory, so it can teach Manus that the next time it handles a similar task, it will deliver a spreadsheet right away. In this example, we'll have Manus conduct some research. It needs to filter New York properties based on multiple criteria. For complex tasks, Manus first breaks them down and creates a to-do list. Manus begins by searching and carefully reading articles about the safest neighborhoods. Then Manus researches middle schools in New York. Next, Manus writes a Python program to calculate my budget. Based on my budget, Manus filters listings on real estate websites. Finally, combining all the information gathered, Manus writes a detailed report and compiles all the resources. In this example, we have Manus perform a correlation analysis between stocks. For professional data, Manus can access authoritative data sources through APIs. After validating the acquired data, Manus begins writing code for data analysis and visualization. For Manus, coding isn't necessarily the goal, but rather a universal tool for solving problems. It looks like Manus has completed the data analysis and visualization. But interactive data visualization is even cooler, so I asked Manus to create a website based on these data. With my permission, Manus deploys the finished website online and provides me with a shareable link. Let's see what Manus has created. What you've just seen is just a small sample of what Manus can do. In fact, on benchmarks designed to evaluate general AI assistance, an early checkpoint of Manus has already achieved state-of-the-art performance, and it's only getting better. Beyond benchmarks, Manus has been solving real-world problems on platforms like Upwork and Fiverr, and has proven its capabilities on Kaggle competitions. This wouldn't be possible without the amazing open source community, which is why we're committed to giving back. 
Manus operates as a multi-agent system powered by several distinct models. So later this year, we're going to open source some of these models specifically post-trained for Manus, inviting everyone to explore this agentic future together. The name Manus comes from the famous motto, Mens at Manus, Mind and Hand. It embodies the belief that knowledge must be applied to make a meaningful impact on the world. And this is precisely the promise of Manus AI, to extend your capabilities, amplify your impact, and be the hand that brings your mind's vision into reality. We can't wait to see what you will achieve with Manus. But you know the crazy part? It's really just a clawed wrapper, which one of their product team members revealed on the platform X. But the truth is, even if Manus is just a wrapper, tools like Cursor, Glean, Perplexity, MoveWorks, Windsurf are all just wrappers without their own models. And these wrappers that have achieved 50 Manasa E plus yearly and unicorn valuation. You can build great products and businesses on top of models. My team got access to Manus on March 15th and we had the chance to play with it. I want to share a full review from Jason, my talented on-staff AI consultant at First Movers. Listen in as Jason reviews it. All right, so I finally got to play around with Manus AI. And uh, one of the first things I wanted to do was create some like use cases and projects that uh, I could actually use on a, on a regular basis. So uh, one of the projects that I'm working on now is building an AI website agent. Uh, utilizing a couple of the platforms like N8N and things like that. And I wanted to integrate high level into it because that's our main CRM that we use. And uh, I wanted to see what kind of ideas it would come up with and what kind of project it would be able to create for me. And then see if I could create a template that I would copy and paste right into N8N that would have the workflow for me. So I just wanted to see what was possible. And so I just created this basic prompt talking about the different softwares I use, um, the kind of uh, tone and, and vibe that I wanted to come from the agent. And I wanted to make sure that we had a knowledge base um, that we can refer to and have one that's self-learning so that as somebody uh, gives it answers or asks questions, we can update our knowledge base so that it can always be learning and self-improving. So one of the things I really like about Manus is that it, it, it thinks really logically. So it creates a to-do list and then it executes that to-do list step-by-step. Step. And then it'll walk you through exactly what it's doing, tells you the files it's creating. And then it gives you a whole bunch of resources at the end that you can download. And, and I thought that was really, really good. Um, and it gives you some information about what it discovers, all the research that it does. Um, yeah, I thought it was uh, really interesting. And then you're able to download all of the files that it comes up with. So like, for example, you can check all the files in the, in the test. So it came up with, Originally, it had just come up with like a, just a, a, the to-do list, a, uh, a proposal for the solution, uh, solution. It gives it a nice diagram and just a bunch of different information that is really well thought out. An implement, uh, implementation plan and a timeline. A lot of stuff that I didn't ask for, but it really built out a ton of different stuff. So I thought that was really cool. It gives me like conversation flows, structures, initial greetings that I can copy and paste. Uh, it update into uh, the workflow. Tons of information and just ideas of processing it. Special cases. So I thought it was really cool how it, it kind of came up with everything. Here's the actual uh, implementation plan, the timeline for everything, how to set everything up. So I thought this was really good. Ton of information, ton of you know knowledge base architecture. So a lot of his stuff that like really just kind of breaks everything down in a way that makes sense. So it just gave me a few of the documents and it didn't give me the uh, the template that I wanted and I didn't ask for it. But and then I decided to ask for it and then it kind of created it. It gave me a, a structure. And. Uh, the first yeah, the first one. The first one that it gave me was kind of like overly complex. It was just a bunch of different nodes. And what it is, is all of these nodes use uh, a community node called LangChain, which we don't use. Um, and I wanted to use it with like actual AI uh, agents and things like that. So I gave it another prompt to basically replace it with, I wanted it to tell me what type of uh, AI models it would recommend, right? Whether it's open AI, whether open AI, whether it's Claude, whatever the LLM was, I wanted it to recommend it to me just to kind of see what it could do. And it did that. Uh, it gave me a, a lot more updated um, 
open AI nodes and things like that. Now, I was hoping it would it would suggest Claude uh, for a lot of the copywriting stuff or the communication text, but it, it it's what it came up with was uh, OpenAI 3.5 for kind of like processing things and then uh, 4.5 for um, any kind of like creating context, creating uh, communication scripts, things like that. So now this isn't how I would build a, uh, a workflow. This is overly complex and I would actually use AI agent nodes instead of the individual um, LLM nodes here. But it gave me a good breakdown and flow of what it's thinking in the process that it's going in. So, uh, I mean, I could take a lot of these ideas and, you know, update them to, to build an actual flow. So while it didn't actually do exactly what I wanted to do, I mean, it got me a long, uh, a, a good amount of time there, right? It, it did about 90% of the work for me. Now I can just go in and tweak, make some adjustments. I've got a lot of the documents that kind of lay everything out step by step, by step for me. Uh, I've got some of the prompts. I've got some of the different uh, the queries that people, examples that people might ask, and I can create like a FAQ uh, based on this information. So, you know, a lot of really good information and it gets you a good chunk in there of, of the way there, right? It's not, not 100% automated, but I think it works really, really well. I created another project where I wanted to see like if it could come up with an actual presentation for me. So I just had a, a quick 20 minute presentation and I had to create a landing page, a lead magnet idea. Um, and it created a decent amount of stuff for me. It created a whole package, scripts, a uh, landing page, um, slides for all of the whole entire presentation. So it gave me a lot of stuff. Now, the, now the slides weren't, uh, they weren't formatted or they didn't look pretty or anything like that, but it's stuff that I could take and put into another uh, AI model or Canva or something like that and create a lot of the stuff from it. So um, it was really good to kind of see uh, the process and how, Manus works and how it really thinks logically through creating the to-do list, executing each task, and then giving you uh, a package full of documents and information that you can actually take and, and implement. Um, so overall, I think Manus is, is, is a good start. Um, it's only the beginning of, of building stuff and agents with AI, but I mean, it, it gets you a lot of the way there. Um, rather than having to create uh, specified you know prompts and work with AI for a couple hours, it really reduced a lot of that time to be able to do it in a short amount of time. So, I mean, even just the whole process of running Manus, it, it took probably about 10 or 15 minutes because I asked it to do a lot of different things. So it does take some time, but it definitely reduces a lot of the time in the overall all scheme of things, right? And I could give them the prompt, tell them what to do, and then go do other things. And then, you know, 15, 20 minutes later, come back and it already had everything completed. So overall, I think it's definitely a great start. Um, it's good to see kind of where AI agents are going. And uh, yeah, definitely excited about the technology as it grows and gets better. And as we're able to integrate all these different things into it, um, they're going to be building a, a lot of different... There's going to be so much more that's coming, uh, especially with the idea of an open source community. Uh, there's a lot of really cool things that I think that are going to come from this. So excited to see where the path that it's going and uh, what exactly comes from it. Manus describes itself as a glimpse into potential AGI and claims what other AI stops at generating ideas, Manus delivers results. But is it living up to the hype? Well, as you saw, yes and no. Jason from our team at First Movers pinpointed that Manus is in fact impressive in how it can handle multi-step tasks with minimal human intervention, create detailed plans before executing, manage complex research across dozens of sources, build functional websites and applications. But it also has limitations. It has speed issues. Tasks can often take 20 plus minutes to complete. It has context window issues. It can crash when handling very large amounts of information and the accuracy is debatable. There can be lots of factual errors in the outputs. Cost is high at an estimated $2 per task. Regular use could become expensive. We also have security concerns. Giving an AI this much autonomy raises potential security issues.
In our own team, we aren't building on the Manus AI agent platform. We use a platform called BuildShip for our workflows. We will be teaching full tutorials on how we build agents in our upcoming labs, which we're currently building out right now. I'm so excited to launch this school. Learn more at firstmovers.ai forward slash labs. All in all, what's clear is that Manus represents another significant step forward in AI agent capabilities. And it's putting pressure on OpenAI and other companies to accelerate their own agent development. Whether or not Manus itself becomes the dominant player, it's pushing the entire industry forward. And that's great news for all of us who use these tools. What do you think about Manus AI? Have you had a chance to try it? Let me know in the comments. Great to be back, my friends. I love you all. See you down the next AI rabbit hole.